So how exciting is it that Tiger Woods is back in action, right? I hope you enjoyed watching the Masters. I sure did, especially from a guy that almost had his leg amputated, spent three months in bed with that leg just recovering, and now a year later, he's back playing competitive golf at a, in a major at a very high level. So we're gonna go ahead and dissect some of the things that he's doing now, some of the things that he's done in the past, and how some of these secrets and things that he uses, right, both with his reconstructed leg and his good leg, can actually help your golf game out. Okay, but before we go and do that, as always, if you like my videos, go ahead and like or subscribe. I also have a free email list that you can sign up for down below and get emails at any time. So let's go ahead and jump in, all right? He's obviously doing something very different. He has a surgically repaired leg, pins, screws, rods, and all kinds of metal hardware in his right leg, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at, diff at the differences of his 2000 swing and his current swing and what exactly that entails. All right, so let's take a look at these moves up close. This is the 2000 Masters, seventh hole. Tiger's trying to really hit one here onto the short par four. And if you take a look at how different his footwork looks back then, you actually can see his right foot. If we really just look closely here, I want you to look closely at just his right foot. He's actually pushing so hard, he's even slipping. He's pushing that right foot up and in towards the golf ball so hard to really increase that hip speed, right? Which translates to more club head speed. So very active there with the ground, very active with his legs, very active with his hips. Um, we go to this current swing of 2022, and you're going to see a difference in the way he's releasing the golf club. So it's a more upper body dominant swing. So to help implement that more upper body dominant swing, notice the difference in his physique. On the left is 2019, on the right is current. Just the size of his upper body is much different. And you'll notice there's not gonna be that violent push off the ground that you see a lot of long, long hitters employ to really kind of boost that club head speed. So look at how much more quiet his lower body is there. And, you know, because of that, you can kind of see here just slightly his upper body is definitely more open to the target. His upper body's more active. His lower body's more passive. Here, his upper body's not near as open. So we're probably talking the difference of 10 to 12 degrees with the shoulders. And his upper body is really working to drag that lower body through, you know. So, you know, it's kind of a blessing and the curse. Back in 2000, when he's driving up off of that, that trail leg so hard and really thrusting the hips, he's getting more club head speed, right? But he's also having some wilder misses, you know, namely he's missing the ball to the right much more often as, you know, the, the, year, the years kept going on. And then sometimes he would flip his hands and also miss it to the left, right? Currently this swing, he's hardly missing balls to the right at all but he is missing some left, okay? But I think this could actually be something that he takes into the future and is able to win again because it really eliminated one of his biggest problems, which was getting stuck. So it's not just Tiger Woods, right? There's other long hitters that use that trail leg push, right? Ben Hogan wrote a book called Power Golf, one of the longest hitters pound for pound that ever lived. Current long hitter Cameron Champ these guys all know how to use the ground very forcefully, right? You'll see in some of the clips that I'm about to show you, they're going to really explain in detail exactly the things that cause them issues and problems, but it also gives you this blessing of all this great distance. So let's go ahead and take a look at what they do to gain power. tip would be hip rotation. For me, I want to have like a fluid, long backswing, make sure I'm set, and then once I'm at the top, I just feel like I try to just rotate as fast as I possibly can. Uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's something I've done for a long time whenever I want to get on one. Like I said, I'll feel like I'm pushing off this right foot and just 
I'm turning my hips as fast as I can. So this is what it looks like. One of the things that for me when I was younger is I would pump the system and, and really push off. I had a tendency of leaving my arms behind me and spinning out of my hips so fast I left my arms behind me. But I really try and feel like I really use this back leg to really push and start clearing and start jumping and getting out of the way. That's how I try and feel it. I've always been a person who would come down and fire the hips so hard and so fast that obviously the club would lag behind me. But you wouldn't tell most golfers this is to try and, for me, what I try and feel is that my arms beat my body down. I try and feel like my arms come down first and exit through the ball first when my hips don't move. That's for me. That's the feeling. That's the feeling the I have. It, it doesn't even come close to that. Obviously, right. I'm more like this at impact. But for me, it, it feels like obviously my arms are winning the race and my body's not popping out of the golf shot. I used to have a problem of laying the club down like this and also popping out of my body and my spine angle would change and I'd chase my right hand. That's the shot I had, and I still have it every once in a while. A lot of people at home have that shot, too. <laughs> well, they don't have it at 150 <laughs> miles per hour like he does, that's for sure. Well, at the top of the swing, you move the lower part of your body, not your shoulders, the lower part of your body, letting your arms and hands out, bringing you into position to hit. But this is the first movement, there. Then you release at the bottom. So we've got two choices here, right? If you're somebody that needs more power, which let's be honest, is probably most of us out there. How can we, like they're talking about, how can we use the ground to pump more energy in the system? This is a very strong muscle here. This is a very strong, you know, it's normally our dominant leg, our trail leg. How can we really forcefully push? And you notice when they all demonstrated it, they did it in a way to where they were always shallowing the club as they did it. And that's, that's another big advantage because just scientifically here, the club's on a more powerful plane. We're, we're getting more angular momentum from this club delivery, right? We're getting the club to come in more shallow, possibly hit up and out on the ball to turn it over. All things that people find difficult to do with drivers sometimes. So when they're describing that sensation of really pushing off that trail leg, you notice that it's always with this motion of the club really shallowing forcefully. So if that's you and you want more distance, especially with the driver, next time you go out, I want you to do some rehearsals where you're really feeling that motion, almost even to an exaggerated degree where you've got to very quickly start to catch up now with your hands and arms. It's a great way to really energize that system so we can release the club for more power, right? Something that actually curses them could be a blessing for you and I in terms of just more yardage down the fairway, right? Now, there's the other end of that spectrum of what Tiger has to do currently because he can't push off that trail leg as well any longer. And that's the next drill. For those of you out there that like, I don't need more yardage, I need more consistency. And I know my lower body's too active. We can learn from what he's doing here. I've got a little piece of cardboard here. And what I want you to do is just put it under your trail foot. And the first thing that you'll feel is obviously if you push really hard, you're going to slide right away. So it's gonna take that initial push off your right leg and it's going to really be take it out of there, okay? Now, not that we don't push with our right leg when we're standing on something like this, but if anything, the feel is we push down, okay? So from this view, right, if I went and hit a ball with this piece of cardboard, and I would, I would start off with maybe like a seven iron before you go into drivers, but if I push really hard, right away I'm gonna hear some noise and that cardboard's gonna slip. So what we want to actually do here is as we start down, I'm going to push, but I'm going to push into the ground so my foot stays planted on the cardboard. And just like he said in some of the other videos there, he's going to allow his arms to get right back in front of him. Notice how I've maintained just really good posture here. I haven't really extended. I haven't come up and out of it. I've maintained good hip depth just from that, just that groundward push. 
and then into the ball, and it almost feels like my arms go past my lower body until my right foot finally comes up after impact. But I love it because regardless of who you are, if you want more distance, go for the first tip, right? Really pump energy into that trail leg. Shallow that golf club as you do it. If that's not you and you want the second one, go ahead and get something like this and learn how to stabilize and quiet your lower body so your arms can sink up. Either way, you're gonna hit the ball straighter and longer down the fairway. I'll see you next video. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you really liked it, feel free to subscribe or give me a thumbs up. I love hearing from you guys too, so definitely drop a comment with any questions or concerns. But if you really wanna get a lot of my content that's not on YouTube, I have an email list. All you need to do is click the link below, put your email in, and you'll be getting all this content for free that nobody else gets on YouTube. Lessons from me that come out almost every other day. I'll talk to you soon.